All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of Cryogenic Engines by forum user Nearty, and this is a very cool little mod pack, <laughs> pun intended, which adds into the game a small selection of six new rockets for you to shoot your ships into space with. It's you know, adds a nice little bit of extra variety into the game which I always appreciate and I always like seeing new engines so let's head into the VAB and take a look at uh, what it adds in and now it should be mentioned this is of course a cryogenic engine pack which means that these engines don't use the traditional fuel that we have in the game of the uh, typical liquid fuel and oxidizer and so one thing right off the bat I gotta mention uh, the mod comes with module manager and fire spitter, which allows you in the game to change the fuel tanks. Now, this should work with any stock fuel tank and maybe probably will work with most other modded fuel tanks. And this will allow you to change these tanks from liquid fuel and oxidizer over to liquid hydrogen and oxidizer because these are, of course, once again, cryogenic engines which use, uh, you know, a gas that's been liquefied and stored at a very, very low temperature. That's the whole point of the engines. And so you can uh, change them up to that and, of course, switch adjust to liquid fuel, just to oxidizer, just to liquid hydrogen, or back to whatever else you need it to be. A very cool little feature. I'm very happy that they added that in. Rather than whole new tanks, uh, just a nice little ability to change it to what you need. Very cool indeed. But let's head over to the engines. And one more thing I probably should talk about before we look at all the individual parts. Uh, again, cryogenic engines. Sort of the point of cryogenic engines are that they have better fuel efficiency, but lower thrusts. So you kind of got to make your choice. Do you want to be able to... Uh, burn for longer using roughly the same fuel, or do you want more thrust to go through more fuel quickly? That's sort of the balance we have with all of the engines in the game anyways, but this adds in a little bit more, uh, you know, hmm, customization, you could say, for you to build your rockets exactly how you like. The one thing to note, even though, yes, uh, typically these engines should be better fuel efficiency for lower thrust, they are also using a fuel, liquid hydrogen, which is less dense. So to get the same delta V, you'll probably need more tanks than you normally would. But again, it's less dense, so that shouldn't add too much more weight to your ship. Uh, but with that all out of the way, let's take a look at the engines themselves. Now, we have six engines, the first of which here being the CT-10 Chelyapinsk cryogenic rocket engine. Oh god, I probably didn't pronounce that right in the slightest. And let's just pop this baby on. And it is gorgeous look at that detailing on the model there i love it this is this is one of my favorite things about mods you just got to love the detailing that goes into models it's just it's so beautiful and it is a very cool once again pun good old times a cool engine that uh, you know cryogenic fuel of course liquid hydrogen it consumes it at a rate of 21.593 per second oxidizer of 21 or not 20 but 2.159 per second flame out under 10 percent a typical sort of thing max thrust in atmosphere 16.9 in vacuum 55 it's ISP uh, is one of 40 at atmosphere and 455 at vacuum and this baby sips fuel but again not a huge amount of thrust it uh, essentially compares to the LV909 engine and it has a very similar thrust but it has a, a lot better fuel efficiency so that is a very nice I do quite like it it has full gimbling control so that's always good as well and of course it comes in the uh, 1.25 size variety and now to skip down the page a bit to look at another 1.25 engine we have this, which is the VL-1 Volcano, which has a much, much higher thrust. 211 in atmosphere, 255 in vacuum, with an ISP of 340 in atmosphere to 410 in vacuum. 
but it also consumes a lot more fuel, 111 roughly liquid hydrogen per second and 11 roughly oxidizer per second. This thing is more or less comparable to, I believe, the swivel here? Yes, yes, that looks about right. But it actually burns fuel more quickly. It's, uh, it, it, you'll go through this tank at a much more quick rate. But again, the fuel is less dense, so you could probably fit in an extra tank here without much harm to your weight ratios. Uh, but yes, a very cool little engine, a bit shorter and stockier than the, uh, Chel Chelyunbinsk. Oh God, I'm I'm horrible at pronouncing things. Uh, but similarly, a very very cool design. Uh, I I like this one a bit better in the looks of the model because this one, if we go down here, uh, I think they're kind of harkening back with the name to like old Soviet engineering instead of. Uh, you know, nice little uh, pistons or anything like that for the vectoring. We have what looks like bike chains on the side, uh, whereas on uh, this little, oh god, what was it called again? The Volcano, it definitely looks like a much more highly engineered thing with little pistons to control the vectoring, or gimbling rather, etc. A very cool engine, again, a very beautiful modeling, very nice texturing. And those are the uh, 1.25 size models. We'll then move on to, uh, I think these are the 2.5s. Uh, yes? No. <laughs> there we go. That is the 2.5 meter. The CT-2X Tunguska cryogenic rocket engine, which this one, a thrust and atmosphere of roughly 116, vacuum of 275, ISP of 190 atmosphere, 450 vacuum, consumes a large amount of fuel at 109 roughly per second liquid hydrogen and nearly about 11 per second of oxidizer. Again, a full gimbling, a very nice design. It's essentially just a widened version of the Volcano. Uh, but again, a very cool. I like the modeling. It's just, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous little engine. And uh, then, as our other 2.5 engine, we have the KS-68 Mars, which, that's not 2.5, I was incorrect. <laughs> There we go. It, it would help if they were organized by size. That would really help. But no, the other 2.5 engine is in fact the KS-01 Odin, which, oh boy, look at the thrust on this baby. 810 atmosphere, 975 vacuum, ISP of 345 atmosphere, 415 vacuum, and sucks down a crap load of fuel at roughly 420 per second on the liquid hydrogen, 41-ish on the oxidizer. And again, just look at that beautiful model. It is just simply gorgeous. And is, again, just a very, very cool engine. Gives you more options. Let's move on finally to the 3.75 size. Now we'll grab the Mars. There we go. Yes, we have the KS-68 Mars, which, oh boy. Oh, oh God, look at the thrust on that, baby. Nearly 2,000 atmospheric thrust. Nearly 2,500 of vacuum thrust. 325 ISP in atmosphere, 405 in vacuum, and uses a whopping little more than 1,000, almost 1,100 liquid hydrogen per second, and nearly 110 oxidizer per second. Dear God, this thing is just insane. And you can also change the part a bit. It has shroud or with no shroud. So you can kind of switch that. Not all the engines have that. I like that little addition. Again, gives you a nice little uh, choice in how you want your ship design to look. And lastly, we have the CT-65 Yucatan. Oh, uh, look at that, baby. It is gorgeous. Just look at the, all the all the pipes and little things connecting it everywhere. It is just simply beautiful. And the Yucatan uses, uh, let's see, on the ISP. Uh, down here, we have the ISP of 235 atmosphere, 435 vacuum, thrust of 816 atmosphere, 1500 vacuum. Wow, that's a lot of thrust in vacuum. That is very nice. And it consumes about 620 liquid hydrogen per second and 62 oxidizer per second. A very, very cool engine. And again, just a beautiful, 
gorgeous design. And it's not just design. If I open up a little craft here, they also added in a new engine effect. So what I have built here is just a quick, quick, crappy little ship. We have a uh, volcano cryogenic engine on this side, and then just a standard LVT-30 over on the other, and of course their corresponding tanks. Again, I love the little uh, fact that you can just change these to your heart's content, and let's uh, launch this uh, to the, uh, well, the launch pad, I guess that's a little redundant on the words there, uh, but yes, to take a look at the new engine effect for these, it's very, very cool, I do enjoy it, let's in fact... Activate that engine. You can see the normal old school effect. It's just sort of like a white flame going down and then of course the smoke sort of tailing off to a point. Very cool. Now on the cryogenics, the new effect for this, it's a much longer flame transitions from white to more orange and rather than tapering to a point, it sort of stays more cylindrical and of course just brighter with uh, the more thrust. And I do like that uh, even with the more thrust, you know, the old school engines, oh boy, we're burning through fuel quick. The old school engines, they flare out more, whereas the cryogenic engines stay far more cylindrical. And then both flame out right about, there we go, we have both. <laughs> <laughs> a very, very short little test, but still, I, I do like the new effects. Let's actually just revert that flight to launch again and see those lovely effects without the uh, gooey getting in the way. So there we go. Beautiful, beautiful effects. I really do like the look of the cryogenic engines here. Uh, not only are, is their modeling beautiful, but I like the addition of their own sort of flame effects for the engine. Very nice indeed. Overall, a very beautifully made mod that I, I, I really enjoy. I always like the addition of new engines or any new parts in general. And uh, this one is definitely a favorite because I've, I've always kind of liked cryogenic engines. I mean, after all, those were the engines that sent these Saturn and five rockets all the way to the moon in the Apollo missions. Good times indeed for them. Wow, we already flamed out on that one. Ha. Wow, we burned real quick. <laughs> Again, though, the, the fuel, less dense. Add another tank, you'll be fine. And yeah, that uh, I think is going to be it for this episode. Definitely go check this mod out if you uh, would like to download it and give it a go. Link is in the description as always. And I do hope you have enjoyed this episode here today. And of course, that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always... Have a good one. Now, Jebediah is going to take a little tumble. Whee! And boom! There we go. Later, folks.